These are the guidelines for the use of anticoagulation around neuraxial procedures. Neuraxial procedures include epidurals and spinal anesthesia, and you can also have combined epidural and spinal anesthesia. And this video will discuss how various anticoagulant medications listed in this first column here should be used around these neuraxial procedures. This information is based on the ARSA 2018 fourth generation guidelines for antithrombotic or thrombolytic therapy. The concern is that if you use anticoagulation too close to neuraxial procedures, you can cause an epidural hematoma, which can result in progression of sensory or motor blockade, bowel and bladder dysfunction, or spinal cord ischemia. Let's go ahead and start with the first of the medications here, low-dose subcutaneous heparin. This is typically 5,000 units twice or three times a day. You want to hold low-dose sub-Q heparin four to six hours before a neuraxial procedure, or if you have normal coagulation status, which means normal coagulation labs, that's fine too. You can restart low-dose sub-Q heparin immediately after a neuraxial procedure. You want to hold low-dose sub-Q heparin four to six hours before neuraxial catheter removal, and you can restart it immediately after neuraxial catheter removal. Next is high-dose sub-Q heparin. That's 7,500 to 10,000 units twice daily. In this case, you want to hold it 12 hours before a neuraxial procedure, and you want to ensure that you have normal coagulation labs, normal PTINR and normal PTT. So in this case, you both need to hold it and ensure your labs are normal. You want to avoid restarting high-dose sub-Q heparin if the catheter is in place. You want to hold uh, the sub-Q heparin if the catheter is in place, so you want to completely not have it if the catheter is in place. You want to restart it, you can, and you can restart it immediately after the catheter is removed. Next is sub-Q heparin, which is our highest dose of heparin here, um, sub-Q. It's over 20,000 units per day. This is therapeutic use of heparin. You want to hold this 24 hours before a neuraxial procedure, and you also want to ensure you have normal coagulation labs. Again, you want to avoid restarting it um, after the neuraxial procedure. You want to avoid um, having it before uh, the neuraxial catheter removal, and you want to and uh, you're able to restart therapeutic sub-Q heparin immediately after removing that neuraxial catheter as well. Next is IV heparin. This needs to be held four to six hours before the neuraxial procedure, and you want to ensure you have normal coagulation labs. You can restart IV heparin one hour after your neuraxial procedure. Before a cath removal, you again want to hold it for four to six hours and ensure you have normal coagulation labs, and you could restart IV heparin one hour after the neuraxial catheter removal. Next is low molecular weight heparin, also called Lovenox. For Lovenox, if the patient got it for at least four days before any kind of procedure, you want to check your platelets before the neuraxial procedure and before removing the catheter to ensure that your platelets are normal. For prophylactic low molecular weight Lovenox daily dosing, you want to hold it for 12 hours before a neuraxial procedure, and you can restart it 12 hours after your neuraxial procedure. If you're removing a neuraxial catheter, you want to hold Lovenox 12 hours before, and if you're restarting it, after removing a neuraxial catheter, you want to wait at least four hours and no earlier than 12 hours after catheter placement. So that, if that catheter was on for a very short amount of time, you still want to wait the full 12 hours before restarting Lovenox. If you're on prophylactic Lovenox with BID dosing, the only things that change are that you want to avoid restarting um, the Lovenox if the catheter was in place for 12 hours after a single shot, and you want to avoid um, using Lovenox if the catheter is still in place before the catheter removal. Next, therapeutic Lovenox. This is a bit of a higher dose, so you want to hold the Lovenox a little bit longer, 24 hours before removing it. Again, you want to avoid using therapeutic Lovenox if the catheter is in place for 24 to 72 hours after a single shot of, uh, of, of neuraxial anesthetic. Again, avoid therapeutic low molecular weight heparin if the catheter is in place, and uh, if you are restarting therapeutic Lovenox, you want to wait at least four hours and no earlier than 24 hours after the catheter placement if that catheter was in there for less than 24 hours. If you're using warfarin, this is the one that we haven't talked about yet, you want to stop warfarin five days before your neuraxial procedure and ensure that the INR is normalized before neuraxial placement. I hope this review of anticoagulation and neuraxial procedures was helpful, and thank you for listening.